is welcome to the lecture 23 of group theory so in this lecture we are going to see the last part of silo theorem that is uh, third silo theorem in the last lecture what we have seen let us recall what we have seen is uh, second silo theorem which says that any 2p silo subgroup second silo theorem says that any 2p silo subgroups are conjugate any 2 P silo subgroup are conjugate right and as a consequence of this what we have seen was a corollary of this which states that uh, a unique P silo subgroup is normal a unique uh, P silo subgroup is normal and uh, then we had seen the number of p silo subgroups in a group g right what is the exact number of p silo subgroup in a group g it is given by so the number of number of p silo subgroups Uh, in a group G is exactly this order of G upon order of uh, NP where uh, NP NP is uh, the normalizer so first of all I should write what is P yeah so where P is uh, any p silo subgroup where p is any p silo subgroup of g and np is the normalizer of uh, and np is the normalizer of p in g so yeah this is uh, these are the three things any two p silo subgroups are conjugate but what important thing is that uh, unique p silo subgroup is normal this is important and this is the total number of uh, number of p silo subgroups in g uh, is the index of normalizer of any p silo subgroup so we are given a p silo subgroup p and then uh, we take np normalizer of p and the index of that so order of g upon order of np okay so now today what we are going to see so this is what we had seen last time and so today silo third theorem so last time as I said that this number is uh, there but it is not useful in computing examples so this third silo theorem will give the not the exact number but it is it will give the form of uh, p silo subgroup oh yes before that uh, in particular what we have seen that uh, uh, this is a divisor of order of p so yeah in particular in particular what is this uh, index is a subgroup so index uh, is a subgroup so therefore the order of g upon order of np is a divisor of uh, order of g in particular the number of uh, the number of p silo subgroups P zero subgroups of uh, G is a divisor of order of G. Yeah, so we have this. Okay. Yeah. So let us let me mark this number of P zero subgroup is a divisor of order of G. So this is the third silo theorem. Third part of uh, silo theorem, which states that 
the number of p zero sub root. This is also giving the number of p zero. So, so first zero theorem gives the existence of p zero sub root. Second zero theorem says that. Um, in fact, the first theorem, if we see the stronger version, then it says that p power alpha, wherever p power alpha divides the order of g, it has a subgroup of p power alpha for all powers alpha. And uh, second zero theorem states that, uh, it, that any two p zero subgroups are conjugate and unique p zero subgroup is normal. And the third p zero subgroups gives the number of uh, p zero subgroups. So as an application of all these uh, theorems, we'll see some examples, couple of examples after this uh, result. So this the, this result states that um, the number of p zero subgroups the number of p zero subgroups uh, in G is of the form. is of the form 1 plus kp so this is of the form 1 plus kp for some integer k so it does not give the exact number it gives it is of the form 1 plus kp right so number of uh, 3 zero subgroup it is of the form 1 plus 3 3k three right so it is of the form 1 plus 3k either it is 1 or it is 4 or if i take k equals to 2 it is 7 or it is 10 so like that it gives it does not give the exact number it gives uh, the form is of the form of this okay so let us see the proof of this okay yeah but this number will be useful in solving examples this is what we use we do not use this one uh, but yeah this is important because this number will help us in uh, arriving at this number so order of g upon order of np that good that we know that exact number which will be used in this theorem okay so let uh, p be a p zero subgroup at least one will be there existence is guaranteed by zero's first theorem so let p be a, a p zero subgroup of uh, p zero subgroup of g uh, and let us assume that order of p and uh, let me write here order of p is uh, some p power n for some n yeah so that then what can we say then uh, p power n plus 1 what can we say that p power n plus 1 does not divide the order of g this is what we can say because we know p zero subgroup is a subgroup of uh, g of the highest prime power so highest power must be in g highest prime power p dividing this power of p dividing order of g is n it, so p power n plus 1 does not divide order of g right so now we, we use the double cosets here also but uh, as you have seen the double cosets we need two subgroups but here we have only one subgroup so what we do we take double cosets of p and p double cosets of a and b they are of the form a x uh, b here we take the double cosets of p and p only so decompose uh, g into double cosets of decompose g into uh, this is giving me a hard time double cosets of uh, p and p p and p so what are the double cosets p x p so that double coset is of the form p x p right so then uh, we can write g in this form then uh, g equals to union of uh, p x p now this is all disjoint union and so what is order of g and so order of g we can write as uh, summation order of uh, p x p right where the sum is over uh, 
yeah so uh, let me not write here so where the sum is over exactly 1x in each uh, so a sum is over 1x in a, each uh, double coset so, okay so then uh, now let us determine order of px p so now what is order of uh, px p this is order of uh, p order of p upon order of uh, p intersection we know this order of a x b is order of a order of b upon order of a intersection x b x inverse so this is x p and uh, x inverse right? so we have this now uh, that means we have to <coughs> uh, analyze this because numerator we know numerator we know this is of order p power n this is also of order p power n yeah order of p is p power n that is what we assume so numerator we know as usual what we do is we analyze denominator and we let us uh, analyze when this is not e these are equal so first we don't write this in the proof but let us say uh, p intersection x uh, p x inverse when this is equals to p if this is equals to p of course this is in because h intersection k is always a subset of h subgroup of h in fact so it has order order of p this has p power n elements uh, this has p power same p has p power n elements and x p x inverse also has p power n elements so if they are equal that means uh, this has p power n elements this also has p power n elements and the intersection also has p power n, n elements so in that case uh, we can say that all are equal so if this is equal yeah i hope uh, you understood that suppose uh, okay though this is subset right so this is already a subset of p but suppose it is equal equal means this a, this set has p power n elements this set also has p power n elements and the intersection if uh, this is equal to p then intersection also has p power n elements how when two sets have five elements and intersection also has five elements this is possible only when the two sets are equal right so this implies that uh, uh, p is equals to in fact this two will be equal so this implies p equals to x p x inverse and the other way was also true yes other way is also true so uh, p equals to x p x inverse so this means that then uh, what is the order of this order of this will be equals to p power uh, n So equal means order has p power n exactly n. So now let us put this in a box. Okay. So this is our just we don't write this. So this is just for understanding. So we say that p intersection x p x is x p x inverse is not equals to p then what is the order of uh, p intersection x p x inverse this will be equals to p power m where m is uh, strictly less than n since uh, p intersection x p x inverse is a proper subgroup will be a proper subgroup of p Right. So in that case, it will be a proper subgroup. If it is not equals to p, it is a subgroup of p. Proper subgroup. Order of p is p power n. So the order is p power m. So upper p power n. Here also p power n, and here is uh, p power m, where m is strictly less than. So then, what is uh, order of p x p? Then we can say that. Then we can say that p power n plus one divides order of. Uh, pxp why it will divide order of pxp because order of pxp here it is p power n n to che it is p power n here the order is p power n here also p power n as i said and here it is uh, p power m so we will have p power n minus m so this will be p power n 
and p power uh, n minus m now m is strictly less than n so that is at least one so n and one at least one so at least p power n or i have written does not divide in, in fact it divides order of this okay in which case in this case when it is not equal then uh, p power n plus one divides order of p x p uh, just uh, pause this and see if you need to uh, analyze this but then when p equals to p x p x inverse this means what p equals to x p x inverse this means that uh, p x equals to x p so when they are equal we have p x equals to x p so when they are not equal we have p x is not equals to x p right so therefore uh, now p intersection x uh, p x inverse is not equals to p implies uh, p x is not equals to x p right so the above can be written as and this this implies uh, that x is not in n p right what is n p n p is all those x uh, which uh, so the left coset is equal to right coset normalizer here this is we have done last time normalizer so when i say that uh, this is not equal what we have got p power n plus 1 divides order of p x p so instead of writing this is not equal what we write is uh, x is not in np so the above can be written as so the above can be written as when x is not in np x is not in np and that then uh, p power n plus 1 divides uh, order of p x p right so this is one one thing now what if x is in n p then so if x is in n p then if x belongs to n p then what we have then x p equals to p x and so what will be p x p p x p is nothing but uh, this will be x p we can write this as uh, p x so p x which is uh, p square x which is again p x uh, don't get confused here what is this yeah we we know that uh, h is a subgroup we know this h a h b this we write as uh, h a b right so this is so what is this p p is nothing but p e p x so this is nothing but p e x identity so which is nothing but p x right so p p x p is uh, nothing but it is p x so order of p x p uh, in that case order of uh, p x p will be what uh, is same as order of p x but the order of p x is same as order of p which is nothing but p power n right so now we have two cases so order of g here we have written like this so this can be now divided into two parts order of g is over all those x where x uh, belongs to x does not belongs to np and then x belongs to np right so two sum we can write so then uh, order of g equals to we can write uh, x belongs to np order of uh, pxp plus summation x uh, not in np order of pxp where the sum is taken over 1x in uh, each equivalence class but here equivalence class is double coset where the sum is over 1x in each double coset where the sums are i should write because there are two sums right summation i have divided now into two parts when the sums are over 1x in uh, in each uh, double coset equivalence class here is double coset uh, pxp okay yeah but what uh, when x is in np what about the first sum so let us analyze what is the first sum uh, if uh, x belongs to np then uh, what is pxp then o of pxp is nothing but then pxp equals to let us say pxp equals to px so then therefore the sum first sum
becomes the first sum is like this summation x uh, belongs to np because it is in np we have seen uh, px p equals to px right so double coset becomes right coset of p so this is nothing but order of uh, px so uh, okay order of px so where the sum is where the sum is uh, over 1x in each now double coset ni i was also in reach right coset right coset uh, px of p in g ni ave it is not g x can't ave je x is coming not from g it is coming from this right so this is uh, of p in np right right cosets of p in np not in g because x g mathi avto in tyare avse so this is nothing but so this is what this is order of uh, px plus uh, order of px how many times number of distinct such x in each right coset so how many right cosets are there order of px plus a. so that is um, the number of right cosets of uh, right cosets px in np in in right cosets of p in np right cosets of p in np right so this is also for just understanding we don't uh, i mean write this so what is this so it will be uh, the sum is therefore the sum is order of px and how many times so each such distinct uh, coset each such distinct right coset of p x can't have a np so p in np so which is index of n index of p but not in g so index of uh, p but in g na ave index of p in g means px so that x belongs to g the cardinality of this but here we are taking px where x belongs to np np and so the cardinality of this so index of p in np not in g right so this is index of p in not in g but in np uh, yeah so px get the vakad repeat as a index of uh, p in np which is nothing but order of uh, px and uh, what is this index index a formula so this is order of np upon uh, order of uh, p and this is nothing but uh, this is order of np only why because this will get cancelled yeah, order of px and order of p gets cancelled because it is same so i can write since uh, order of uh, px equals to order of p all right so now i can remove this let me remove this so px px plus i hope uh, you get it the first sum is what the first sum is exactly this okay now what about the second sum what about the second sum is uh, when x is not in np x is not in np this we have already done when x is not in np then p power n plus 1 divides so order of pxp so this is true for all such x so atle apne divide kar diye that means p, p power n plus 1 divides this 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 plus 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 so it divides the whole sum so if x is not in np if x is not in np then uh, p power n plus 1 divides order of pxp so there there then uh, p power n plus 1 we can say that it divides this sum x is not in np whole whole entire terms so this so that uh, so the second sum can be written as so so we can write this so summation x when it is not in np can be written as uh, order of pxp can be written as some p power n plus 1 u for some u for some integer u right if a divides b so then we can write b as uh, a c for some c for some c this is what we use here right so when p power n plus 1 divides this term so this term can be written as p power n plus 1 and some c 
right? So three parent will suffer some integer. So there, therefore, order of g now can be written as order of g is what is the first sum? First sum is uh, this. But in this case, when x is in NP, this double coset is nothing but it is uh, the right coset px. So order of px plus order of px plus order of px clearly times number of distinct x. So one over one x in each right coset. So that means it is exactly number of right cosets of p. That px is a right coset of p, but not in g. In g, in g when x comes from g, but here x comes from NP. So number of right cosets, so that is index of p in NP. Or if you want to write, so it is order of uh, g upon order of NP. Uh, order of g upon order of p. Order of NP upon order of p. So px times order of uh, NP upon order of p. But order of px is same as order of p. So the first sum what we got to is uh, order of NP. So this is order of NP plus. And the second sum. Second sum what we have got is when x is not there, then it is of this form p power n plus 1 u. So this is p power n plus 1 times u. So now we know that np is a subgroup of g, so order divide. So divide by order of np. So this implies uh, order of uh, g upon order of np. Uh, this is equals to 1 plus uh, p power n plus 1 u upon order of uh, np. Right? But the divide by this. Now what is this? This is exactly what we wanted, the number of p silo subgroups. You can see Kale Aprajoyutu last time we had seen. Yes, number of p silo subgroup is this order of g upon order of np, where p is one such p silo subgroup. And that is what we wanted here, the number of p silo subgroup. So on the left hand side we have number of p silo subgroup, on the right hand side we have one plus something is there. And that's something we have to show that uh, it is of the form can you yeah, it is of the form Kp. This is what we have to show. So number of p silo subgroup is of this form, 1 plus Kp. So when this integer can be written as Kp, then we are done. If this term can be written as Kp, then we are done. That means we should show that p divides this term, then we are done, finish. So p will divide this term, why? So since uh, p power n plus 1 does not divide, of course this is an integer because uh, np divides this, np divides this, order of np divides uh, order of g because it is subgroup. So an order of np divides order of np of course and therefore it also divides this term. So p power n plus 1 u upon order of np, integer to shed. There is no doubt about it. It is an integer but we will show that p divides that integer. Since p power n plus 1 does not divide order of g, why? g has p silo subgroup start karedu. We have started with g is a p silo subgroup. Uh, of order p power n plus 1 therefore p power n plus 1 does not divide order of g this is uh, p we would require right p power n plus 1 does not divide order of g so it cannot divide uh, p power n plus 1 cannot divide order of np it cannot divide order of np because np is a subgroup group na order na divide not because subgroup na order and divide not so numerator has how many powers of p n plus 1 and denominator cannot have n plus 1 powers of p therefore therefore so then therefore p divides uh, p divides p power n plus 1 u upon uh, order of np and so we can write We can write this term p power n plus 1 uh, u upon order of np uh, as uh, some kp for some integer k. So, hence, uh, so thus, what is this order of g upon order of np is of the form 1 plus kp. 1 plus uh, this now this can be written as kp so it is of the form 1 plus kp and uh, and left hand side is nothing but hence the number of this is in fact the number of uh, p silo subgroups in g the number of p silo subgroups is of the form it is not exact number it is of the form uh, 1 plus kp so it is of the form uh, 1 
either one which if it is unique that is one which is one or uh, one plus p or one plus two p one plus three p it is of al always of this form and uh, more importantly so thus uh, this is this completes the, the theorem but uh, we remark that uh, one plus k p divides order of g why because since uh, what we know is the number of uh, p c by the previous lemma so here also this is by previous lemma previous lemma says that this is the number of p c subgroup so by previous lemma the number of p c subgroup is of the form 1 plus kp and the previous lemma also says that this this is a divisor it's, it's not the lemma but it is actually order of np is uh, divides order of g so this fraction is an integer so and in fact it is a divisor of uh, order of g so since the number of uh, p silo subgroups of g divides the order of g so 1 plus kp divides this yeah and uh, okay so now let us consider uh, some applications but before that uh, we need to consider this definition of simple group what is a simple group definition also is simple we should have considered earlier but uh, since now we are going to study application part so we are going to introduce now so a group is said to be simple if it has no proper no proper normal subgroups right so group is simple if it has no proper normal subgroups uh, if it has one proper subgroup which is normal of course e and g identity and the group itself are always normal in g except that if it is a proper normal subgroup it is not simple if it has no proper normal subgroups then it is uh, simple for example uh, i can give you trivial examples right now uh, without uh, going into much detail for examples uh, if it has no proper normal subgroup so if it has no proper subgroup then normal subgroup ni so the first example i would say that uh, let us say z5 what are the subgroups of z5 order of subgroups divides order of group so it should divide phi so order of subgroup can be either one which is identity order of subgroup either can be phi which is z phi itself so there is no proper subgroup then there is no question of normal subgroup proper normal subgroup yeah so then there is no so such examples can be given you know you can take z7 or whatever z11 something like this which does not have any proper subgroup at all subgroup is not proper normal subgroup in the proper so this is so these are simple what about uh, s3 s3 is not simple s3 is not simple why because uh, as the subgroup generated by psi right e psi psi square this is normal this is what we have checked in unit one this is normal and uh, what about z4 Z4 is also not simple. It is not simple because it has a normal subgroup as the subgroup generated by 2. 2 is uh, 0, 2 is normal in Z4. It's normal in S3. Yeah, 0, 2. Abelian group, abelian group, every subgroups are normal. These are also abelian groups. So every subgroup is normal, but it does not have a proper subgroup one because uh, prime order. Right? So they are uh, simple. Uh, definition is simple. No proper normal subgroups. Then it is a simple group. If it has one, if you can find one proper normal subgroup, then it is the group is not simple. Okay. So now we see the application part of uh, Silo theorem. We'll see two examples. When in one example, we can say that a group is abelian or not, and in another example, we'll see whether the group is simple or not. 
So consider the first example. Uh, show that a group of order eleven square into thirteen square is a billion. So that the group of order eleven square into thirteen square is a billion. So if this is not given like this, 11 square, 13 square, then what we have to do, we have to factorize. If it is multiplied, 121 into 169, I don't know. But if that number is given, then you have to factorize and then uh, uh, solve this example. Okay. okay. So we are going to use so many uh, results what we have seen. So this is now very important. So please pay attention. Watch it carefully. So let... Uh, G be a group whose order is 11 square into 13 square. So first we determine how many uh, 11 silo subgroups are there. So first we determine the number of 11 silo subgroups in G. Right? So G will have 11 silo subgroup, G will have a 13 silo subgroup. Right? I mean two types of P silo subgroups. Uh, one is 11 silo subgroup and another is uh, 13 silo subgroup. There are two uh, primes dividing order of G. So it has this. Okay, so first we determine the number of 11 silo subgroups in G. So by, uh, see there is one lemma, how many subgroups are there, P0 subgroup, order of G upon order of NP normalizer where P is one, P, any P0 subgroup. This is also the exact number, uh, but then by Silo's third theorem, we know that number is of the form 1 plus KP. So here the number is of the form 11 is a prime, so it is of the form 1 plus 11 K. So by Silo's uh, third theorem, by third Silo theorem, This number is of the form 1 plus 11k and it divides and it divides order of uh, g that is uh, 11 square and 13 square. So what we know is 1 plus 11k divides 11 square into 13 square but what is gcd of uh, 1 plus 11 k sorry gcd of uh, 1 plus 11 k with 11 square this is 1 why because 11 square na kon divide kare 1 divides 11 or 11 square divides 11 square and uh, 11 divides this term 11 k then 11 should divide here also so 11 divides 1 this is not possible so 11 cannot be there. 11 square and divide kare. 11 square we don't know whether it divides this or not. So GCD cannot be 11 square. GCD cannot be 11. Therefore GCD is 1. Right. Jo 11 is here. 11 is here also. So that means 11 divides. So there is 11 divides this. If there is a common divisor it divides D. Jo GCD divide. D, if D is the GCD. D divides 11 square. D divides uh, 11 k 1 plus 11 k but d divides 11 square then d if it, d is not 1 then d is 11 and 11 divides this term therefore 11 divides 1 which is not possible so uh, the gcd is 1 always we will write this everywhere when we use this kind of uh, argument we write 1 plus kp where number of zero subgroup is this and, and 1 plus kp gcd with p power n whatever n is it, it is whatever m or n whatever that is gcd is always one so we know that uh, if a divides bc and uh, gcd of uh, a and b is one so this implies we say that a divides c so here 1 plus 11 k divides 11 square 13 square but the gcd of 1 plus 11 k and 11 square is one so we say that 1 plus uh, 11 k divides 13 square so is it possible if k equals to 0, this is possible, 1 divides 13 square. 
k equals to 1 लाऊँ तो सो आवे if I take k equals to 1 I get uh, 1 plus 11 k is equals to 12 12 does not divide uh, 13 square okay if I take k equals to 2 then uh, we have 1 plus 22 which is 23 uh, 23 does not divide 13 square it does not divide 13 square does not divide this k equals to 3 and so on it will not divide so only possibility here you can see the only possibility is k equals to 1 k equals to 0 so the therefore k equals to 0 if k equals to 0 it is not the number of p zero subgroup is 0 number so outside number of p zero subgroup is this so put k equals to 0 so number of p zero subgroup is 1 so th therefore k equals to 0 and hence uh, g has a unique unique 11 silo subgroup and let us call it a say a so what is order of a order of a is uh, 11 square highest prime dividing order of uh, highest highest power of 11 dividing order of g is 2 so order of a is p silo subgroup 11 silo subgroups and the order is 11 square that is 121 121 and uh, a is unique because the only possibility is k is 0 a is unique so since uh, unique p silo subgroup is normal so since a is unique p silo subgroup a is a uh, unique 11 silo subgroup a is normal right this is a corollary after um, the second silo theorem consequence of the second silo theorem so a is normal we know also order of uh, a is 11 square which is p square also since order of a is uh, 11 square which is square of prime right we have seen earlier in unit 2 every group of order p square is abelian so order of a is a square of prime uh, a is abelian Okay, so we have a subgroup uh, of order 11 square which is uh, normal and which is a billion. So 11 silo subgroup, uh, 11 silo subgroup, we have found that it is normal, it is a billion. Okay, now similarly, in, let us in, investigate uh, number of 13 silo subgroups. So now we determine the number of 13 silo subgroups in G. in silo subgroups in G. What is this number? This number is of the form 13, 1 plus 13 K. So 1 plus 13 K divides uh, order of G. 1 plus 13 K divides order of G which is uh, 11 square, 13 square. But again the same thing but uh, GCD of 1 plus 13 K uh, with 13 square you know whatever 13 square 13 cube this GCD is always one and so what we have and so 1 plus 13 K must divide 11 square so 1 plus 13 square does not divide this 13 square GCD is one so 1 plus 13 square must divide 121 so what should be K k is 0 is allowed right? k is 0 then 1 1 divides 11 square that is fine if i take k equals to 1 so to so there is a 14 14 does not divide uh, 121 if i take k equals to 2 so 26 plus 1 27 27 also does not divide 121 and 121 divides so 1 11 and 11 square 121 itself so only divisors are 1 11 and a 121 only three divisors it has one pp square k equals to 0 ma 1 house k equals to 1 lo the 14 11 na the cross carry you the 11 to carry any other and a passage so check around 121 but 1 plus 13 k carry 121 na hai. 1 plus 13 k is never 121 so for no k this is possible so only k uh, for which 1 plus 13 k divides 11 squares so k is 0 therefore k is 0 and hence uh, number of 13 silo subgroups in G is 
is 1 or we can say that G has a unique 13 silo subgroup right so that is uh, G has G has so this is 1 it is G has a unique uh, 13 13 silo subgroup all right let us call it b 11 silo subgroup we called it a so let us call it b so because uh, it is unique right so b is unique 13 silo subgroup that is b and therefore b is normal uh, since b is unique uh, 13 silo subgroup So what we have is B is uh, normal okay and what is order of B square or sorry order of B also order of B is order of B is nothing but 13 square 13 silo subgroup what is order of 13 silo subgroup order of 13 silo subgroup is the highest power of 13 dividing so order of 13 raised to n where n is the highest power so it is 13 square divides this but 13 cube clearly does not divide this so order of this is 13 square which is of the form again p square right so p is prime it is square of prime so therefore b is so b is also a billion every group of order p square is a billion so b is a billion so the 13 silo subgroup is also uh, normal b is also normal 13 silo subgroup and b is a billion so a is a billion b is a billion and uh, both are normal a and b are normal uh, <coughs> now let us find out what is order of a intersection b so let us uh, what what can be a intersection b uh, so if they are prime then a intersection b is going to be identity this is what we show so let uh, x belongs to a intersection b so then order of x uh, divides order of a and uh, order of x divides order of b yeah, so this implies x belongs to a and x belongs to b so order of x that is order of x divides 11 square and uh, order of x divides 13 square so order of x uh, divides the gcd right gcd of 11 square and 13 square which is 1 so this implies x equals to identity hence what we have they do not have any intersection right when two subgroups have uh, order which are relatively prime which are co-prime a order of the co-prime group of order 4 group of order 9 they do not have any element in common can the four order any other elements give away whose orders are dividing 4 that means 1, 2 or 4 order as elements away. and 9 order and other elements give away. the order divides 9 that means 1, 3 and 9 so they do not have any element in common right order of 15 and 14 so they do not have uh, GCD is 1 so if the GCD is 1 then X is identity so hence uh, A intersection B is uh, its identity so first in notation writes like this we write like this uh, so it's, it says that generated by a singleton identity which is same as singleton identity so now uh, what is order of a b so then uh, order of a b is you know order of a b is order of a order of b upon order of a intersection b so this is same as a intersection b to one thank you so order of a upon order of b upon one so this is order of a is 11 square and this is 13 square so this is same as order of G so order is same and a B is subset of uh, since a B is subset of G whatever is that subset to thai the subgroup thai now thai HK is subgroup if and only if HK equals to KH but whatever it is subset having same number of elements so we can say that uh, and uh, this is same and order of G order of a B is same as order of g we can say that uh, g equals to 
a b so what we have is g equals to a b so that is uh, how can we write g so g equals to a b and we know how how can we write g so it is a b so that uh, a belongs to a and b belongs to b yeah so now if i want to show that g is abelian so how do i show that g is abelian so i take two elements in g x y in g then uh, x is of the form a1 b1 right now i have i know that g is of this form and y is of the form a2 b2 what i have to show x y equals to y x so if uh, i am writing if this is analysis huh? i am not doing it i am not proving it if x y equal to y x then or let me write x y equal to y x implies what will be this a1 right uh, b1 or let us say when do we have x y equal to y x so a1 b1 a2 b2 Suppose uh, if if we want x y equal to y x, so so how do a to b two our side how do a one b one comes this side? So that means uh, this people should commute, right? Uh, so that means suppose a one, and we should be having this commute. So a to b two how do a a to b one, and b two, and then a two should go here, and b one b two also should commute. So uh, a one. So that that a one a two should become a two a one, and uh, this should become uh, b two b one, and then uh, uh, this also should commute. So then we must have uh, this is same as a two b two a one b one. Okay. So then this is same as uh, so this is equals to not same equals to. If we do this much commuting, then we have this is equals to so this is y, this is x, right? So what we did, we we commuted an element of b and an element of a, so they they commute. And here we had uh, elements of a and b commutes, so elements of a commute. And elements of b commute. So this also commute, and uh, similarly here also same thing. Here we had an element of A commutes with an element of B. Element of A commutes with an element of B. But this is there. Elements of A commute and elements of B commute. This is all, always there because uh, B is a billion. So whenever we have B one, B two. We have B two B one, so that is very much possible, right? And uh, elements of A also commutes, right? So because A is also abelian, so that A one A two is same as A two A one, so that is fine. What we needed is uh, this element of B one A two, and that is same as A two B one, and here also. So yeah, so we needed an element of uh, A and B to commute, an element of A and an element of B we want to. We want to. We want that uh, condition that it should commute. If we have that, then uh, we are done. So A and B are abelian. So any two elements of A commute, any two elements of this is analysis. Just for understanding, we don't write this. So let me put this in a box. Not for writing, just for understanding. Yeah. Okay. So finally, we want we we show that because G equals to A B. So this this makes it possible. G equals to A B, so finally we show that. An element of A commutes with an element of B, or element of A and B commute with each other. So what we want to show? So this is what we want to show. We want to show that A B equals to B A, where A is in A and B is in B. 
so that is it is same as showing uh, if I multiply this so a b then I multiply on right side by a inverse a inverse equals to b this is same as showing uh, a b a inverse b inverse equals to identity if we show this also it is fine or we, the same is showing that a b a inverse b inverse belongs to a intersection b that is also fine because since a intersection b we have seen that this is nothing but this is identity that a intersection b is identity so if we show that a when whenever a is in a and b is in b a b a inverse b inverse is in a intersection b then also we are done okay so now yeah so let this is again analysis but not to be written you can write this no problem but just for our, our understanding so now let uh, a belongs to a sorry let a belongs to a and uh, b belongs to b here we use the fact that unique piece of subgroup is normal you see we are using so many results here group of order p square is a billion unique silo subgroup is normal there exists a silo subgroup and the number of p silo subgroups so all silo theorems are applied here and uh, even other results are also applied so a in a and b is in b so since a is normal since uh, a is normal a b a inverse Right, A B A inverse uh, same house. Eh? Oh, sorry, B A B inverse. B A B inverse is in A. Why? Since A inverse is in A. A have to A inverse is in A because A is a subgroup. So normal way to suit G N G inverse belongs to N. Whenever N belongs to N, center will varu N mahu jo N for all uh, G in G. So I am taking B in G b in b is here but b in g i am using the fact and center value came as a center value this is in a this element the element here which is the middle not center i sorry i should use the word middle one is in a right and uh, so b a inverse b inverse is in a but a is in a so the product is in a this implies uh, a b a inverse b inverse is in a okay so similarly now use since b is normal since b is normal the middle element i keep from b so middle element is b in, in b and i multiply on both sides by a and a inverse so this is an element in b because the middle one is b for all g b g inverse is in b so i take a a b a inverse is in b and b is in b so the product is in b so this this implies a b a inverse and multiply by b so this is in b so hence uh, a b a inverse b is inverse is in a intersection b but which is nothing but this so a b equals to b a because a b inverse b inverse so if you want to write a b a inverse uh, b inverse equals to identity or a b equals to b a and hence g is a b Right. so we show that g is a bit um, yeah so one example more is remaining let us do that okay so just go through this what we have done whenever we have something like this g of this order is a billion so find out the primes find out the number of uh, those p zero subgroups so number here we have found 11 zero subgroup is also unique we called it a because it is unique it is normal right now we are not using normal we'll use a band and because it is 11 square so it is a billion so p square that is a billion similarly 13 silo subgroup the number is 1 plus 13 k which divides uh, order of g but 1 plus 13 k does not divide 13 square because the gcd is always one 1 plus kp you know p power n the gcd one is a so it should divide all the remaining uh, factors which is 11 square which is also not possible only possibility is k equals 0 and k equals 0 then number 1 plus 13 k is 1 so it has unique uh, 13 zero subgroup which is say b because it is unique b is also normal and what is the order order is the highest power 13 so 13 square so 13 square so 
that also is a p square form so b is a billion so we have unique 11 zero subgroup a unique 13 zero subgroup b both are normal both are a billion and the intersection of course because uh, this is a power of 11 and another has power of order which are power of 13 the gcd is one so the intersection is identity that is what we have done and so g equals to ab if g equals to ab so every element of g can be written in the form like this right then uh, we, we investigate when do this element commute so what we are using to show that the elements commute we are using the two elements of a also commute we are using this fact a1 a2 equals a2 a1 b1 b2 equals b2 b1 so that is what already we have because a is abelian b is abelian what more we are using is that an element of a and an element of b commute so that is what we want so this is what we want if i take a in a and b in b then i should have a b equals to b a that means i should have a b a inverse b inverse equals to e if i show that a b a inverse b inverse is in a intersection b because a intersection b is already identity right banne alag alag prime power at so a intersection b here yeah this is identity so then also i am done so now we are going to show this this is type of normal condition division group is normal then we have this kind of element belongs to this so now we use the fact that a and b are normal so we start with let a in a and b in b since a is normal i can keep the middle element uh, of a but i'm i cannot take a here i am a set curve so what i'll use is i'll use a inverse so a inverse i keep in a and i multiply by b and b inverse on the other side because a is normal this is an element of a and just multiply by a on the left so a b a inverse b inverse is in a similarly b is normal so in between now i i so this is the th form i use a b a inverse b uh, yeah so a b a inverse is in b the middle element is in uh, the b so because b is normal this is there and then b is already there in b so just multiply by b on the right side so we have a b a inverse uh, b inverse is in uh, b so a b a inverse b inverse is in a intersection b which is identity so a b equals to b a and hence g is a billion right you should practice some more examples of this form but yeah do not generalize this uh, do not generalize this with p square q square because uh, it depends here how many what are the number of p zero subgroups it depends here it's not true for all primes here 13 and 11 my setting page i say get this k is zero only possibility is k is zero and here also the only possibility for this uh, is k is zero because uh, 1 plus 11 k does not divide 13 square right if k is greater than 1 so here also k is zero but we cannot generalize this for all p and q quick prime mate to our division maybe they will give more possibilities of k so we cannot say always unique so normal na kya so this proof cannot be generalized for all p square q square right for example i i don't remember but maybe three square five square try this it's not going to happen 225 order no group 15 square three square five square so that will not happen okay yeah so this is now the second example uh, show that so that was about a billion now this is about simple show that a group of order 72 cannot be simple right so let uh, g be a group order of g is uh, 72 what is 72 8 into 9 which is uh, 2 cube and uh, 3 square we have to show that it is not simple so what is a simple group recall si simple when g is called simple if it has no proper normal subgroup we are here we want to show that it cannot be simple that means we want we want to find one we have to find one proper normal subgroup normal karate so for so far we have seen a unique p zero subgroup is normal so if we find that it has a unique p zero subgroup then it is uh, normal so before going to that let me uh, consider a easier example before going to this so let us uh, introduce uh, an easier example so let me keep this as an example number three yeah so this will, will be example number three uh, let us consider so application number two so 
Silo theorems, application number two. And let us consider example number two. Show that group of order. Um, let me think one moment. Yeah, we can take 20. Group of order 20 cannot be simple. Okay, so let us take the uh, order of G is uh, 20, which is uh, 2 square into 5. And so it has two zero subgroup of order 4, 2 square. It has a 5 zero subgroup order 5, 5 power 1. Right. So uh, let we, if we show that either 2 zero subgroup is unique, then it is normal. Unique P zero subgroup is normal. Or we show that two, 5 zero subgroup is unique, then it is normal. And a proper normal subgroup body 20 order ma 4 order no kato normal thesis say the 5 order no if it is normal then we are done so let us uh, find the number of 2 zero subgroup so 1 plus 2k is the number of 2 zero subgroup it divides uh, 20 so it divides 20 which is uh, nothing but 2 square into 5 but as we said 1 plus 2k does not divide uh, but gcd of this right so GCD of 1 plus 2k and 2 square. This is 1. So 1 plus 2k divides 5, which implies so the possibilities of k are k equals to 0. If I take 0, then 1 plus 2k is 1. 1 divides 5, that is fine. If I take k equals to 1, k equals to 1, 1 plus 2k, so I say 1 plus 2k equals to 3. 3 does not divide 5, so k equals to 1 to nahi hai. So k equals to 1 is not possible. What if I take k equals to 2? k equals to 2, then 1 plus 2k is 5. 1 plus 2k is 5 and 5 divides 5. Yeah, so there, there are two possibilities, k equals to this and this. If k equals to 0, this implies uh, G has a unique two silo subgroup with uh, order four, order four, yeah, two square. And in that case, uh, it is normal, which will be normal. Not the correct way to write, but. Uh, just discussing a, an easier example, not not easy, but uh, another case where which is normal. So in that case, four order group normal thing. But what if this k equals to two? If k equals to two, then G has uh, one plus two k, which is uh, five. G has five distinct five two silo subgroups. So number of two silo subgroups is five, right? So that is number of two silo subgroups of G is five. That is number of uh, two silo subgroups in G is five. Because this is five, so we don't know whether they are normal or not. If it is unique, it is normal, two silo subgroups. So there are five subgroups of four elements of order four. Char order or a panch subgroup multi. So whether any or any of that is normal, whether all are normal, we don't know about this. So we cannot say. So there are two possibilities here. You can see we cannot say that it is not uh, it is always there will be a non normal. But then we have another prime also. We have an advantage here, we have another prime. Okay, let me insert more space. Where does it go? Maybe end of the page, yeah. So we have another prime also. Now consider the number of five silo subgroups. One plus five k divides two square into five. But uh, as argued earlier, one plus five k it does not divide uh, five. 
because GCD of 1 plus 5k and 5 is 1 and so 1 plus 5k divides uh, 2 square 1 plus 5k divides 4 1 plus 5k divides 4 this implies k must be 0 this is only possibility that k equals to 0 1 plus 5k is 1 1 divides 4 if I take k equals to 1 right if uh, k equals to 1 to 1 plus 5k so they just said 1 plus 5k will be of the form 6 right uh, sorry I got a phone call in between uh, yeah so if uh, k equals to 1 what I was saying yes if k equals to 1 then 1 plus 5k is 6 which is already greater than 4 which is greater than 4 so it, it cannot divide so 1 plus 5k if k is greater than 1 it cannot divide 4 then if I take k equals to 2 to the by 4th beyond Jaturyu so it is not possible so yes so in that case k equals to 0 and so g has a unique phi silo subgroup and which is normal which is normal and so g cannot be simple so group of order 20 cannot be simple we wanted one normal subgroup gummy mala either two silo subgroup is normal or a five silo subgroup is normal either way we are done but you see there is a two silo subgroup there are two possibilities if k equals zero then it is unique then it is normal but if k equals to two then there are five different two silo subgroups that means uh, five subgroups of order four चार ओर ना सब रूप पांच जुदा जुदा मले ये मां नॉर्मल कई ना से कई अपन कबर ना चीज़ हो कई से कई राइट सो देन वी कैन नॉट कंक्लूड तो टू सिलो सब रूप डज नॉट गिव एनी इनफॉरमेशन अबाउट वेदर इट विल बी नॉर्मल बिकॉज़ इट वी कैन नॉट कंक्लूड इट इज़ यूनिक सो बट फाइव सिलो सब रूप इज़ यूनिक दैट it has no proper normal subgroup, but uh, five order no subgroup molecule, five silo subgroup order five, which is proper, and it is normal. So we are done. So this is and so that's why I considered this example. Okay, now let me add one more page and let us go to our ex own example. Uh, so, apart in we have. Okay. Yeah, it fits well. Okay, now show that a group of order 72 it cannot be simple. So we need to find one normal subgroup. So either we show that it has a two silo subgroup, that is a subgroup of order 8 is unique, then it is normal. If we show that a three silo subgroup, that is order three silo subgroup, no order so then 9, 3 square is unique, then it is normal. Let me start with 3. Two months. So let us start with three. So let us first determine the let us determine we determine the number of three silo subgroups. We determine the number of uh, three silo subgroups of G. So that is uh, which is usually we denote by n three n p which is one plus k p is one plus three k. Now 1 plus 3k divides uh, 2 cube into 3 square. Okay, but as usual, GCD of uh, now we already just 1 plus 3k and 3 square is always 1. So what we have is 1 plus 3k divides uh, 2 cube, 8. So what are the possibilities of uh, k? So k equals to 0 thou is always 0 is always possibility. When you take k equals to 0, 1 plus kp is always 1, 1 to badan divide kare, so 0 is there, let us check any other possibility is there or not, 1 mukhe to, or k equals to 1 also is there, if I take k equals to 1, 1 plus 3k is 4, 4 divides 8, what about k equals to 2, uh, then 1 plus uh, 3k is uh, 7, here 1 plus 3k in this case is uh, 1, here 1 plus 3k here is uh, 4 and if I take k equals to 2 1 plus 3k is 7 7 does not divide 8 so 7 does not divide 8 this divides 8 this uh, divides 8 and if I take k equals to 3 1 plus uh, 3k is uh, 9 and 10 10 does not divide 8 and apachito vadig so k equals to 4 so it exceeds 8 already so those numbers cannot divide 8 
so how many possibilities this does not divide it this does not divide it dividing it are there are two possibilities k equal to zero and so there these are two possibilities or let me add yeah k equals to zero and k equals to one so again you see that same type of thing happening which was happening for two zero subgroup in the above case so if k equals to zero if k equals zero then uh, g has a unique uh, g has a unique uh, three silo subgroup three silo subgroup uh, which is normal unique silo subgroup is always normal and hence g cannot be simple hence g cannot be simple i'm sorry for the vegetable and fruit vendors passing by so this is the difficulty in recording a video at home on a holiday like this and uh, otherwise i usually record my video at late night so this does not happen okay but we have another possibility also k equals to one so if uh, k equals to one then the number of three silo subgroups then the number of uh, three silo subgroups in g is yeah and the number of three zero subgroups in g is uh, how many yeah it is four right if this is the case then either it is one or four so four there are four different uh, three zero subgroups what is order of three zero subgroup three square which is nine so nine order and four groups are said. So now we cannot say that it is uh, simple. So let uh, P be let P be a piece of a three silo subgroup. In this case also normal to outset. This is not normal, but there is some way to find a normal subgroup. And I told you in unit two that that result will be useful. Let P be a three silo subgroup of G and N be normalizer. And n equals to np be its normalizer then uh, what is index of n in g index of n in g is nothing but uh, order of uh, g upon order of n that is same as uh, order of n is same as np right n or np so n is this np so that is uh, right. So this is n p, and we know this is number of uh, p zero subgroups. What is the number of p zero subgroups? We have what is it is four. Right. So we have found that uh, this number is four, and so the index of n is four. Right. And uh, we know that this result, if you recall, uh, w k t, we know that. Uh, if index of uh, if order of g does not divide index of uh, h factorial right h is subgroup of g where h is a subgroup of g then h has h contains a normal subgroup of g a non non trivial non trivial normal subgroup of g after kelly's theorem we have seen this i hope you recall this this is the result which we are using and uh, so what we are using here we are saying that uh, order of g note that note that order of g divides index of uh, n factorial that is uh, does not divide yeah so that means 72 does not divide uh, 4 factorial what is uh, n so yeah well, let me recall it afterwards so then by the above result then by above stated result above stated result So this is the result.
n has a non trivial n contains n contains a non trivial normal subgroup of g so in that case also we got a normal subgroup of g hence g cannot be simple yes okay so in that case also yeah so what we have done we want to show that a subgroup of order 72 cannot be simple so 72 we have 2 cube and 3 square so there is a 2 zero subgroup the possibilities of 2 zero subgroup existence it always exists order 8 3 zero subgroup order 9 let us find the number of 3 zero subgroups so number of 3 zero subgroups either it is uh, 1 either it is uh, unique or it is 4 so if it is unique uh, 3 zero subgroup it is normal the group cannot be simple we are done right so in this case we are done but if k equals to 1 that means it then number of 3 zero subgroups are 4 then we have to do some more uh, work so let p be a 3 zero subgroup and n be the normalizer of p so what is index of n order of g upon order of np which is 4 we know that uh, in number of uh, p zero subgroup is nothing but order of g upon order of np and here the number is 4 so this is 4 so index of n is 4 and uh, order of g does not divide the factorial 24 72 does not divide 24 that means order of g does not divide index of n factorial that means n has by this result n has uh, a non-trivial normal subgroup of g in that case also we don't know what is that group but we found n has some non-trivial normal subgroup of g that means g has a non-trivial proper normal subgroup yes and therefore g cannot be simple in this case so that is uh, we had to in the previous case 2 or 5 mate 2 mate na 2 mate 2 mate also we can use uh, the same thing here also maybe uh, but 5 mate mali ja to easily so it was okay but here uh, we, we tried with 3. Now you can try with 2 and what happens? Try with see this. So 1 plus 2k, try with this. Divide 3 square. 2 is 2 cube. 2 cube is the divide. Na kare. So try with this. 1 plus 2k divides 3 square. So 9. And then try what are the possibilities of k. And whether we are going to able to do that easily or not. Any of this case is fine. If we need just one proper normal subgroup. Then g cannot be simple. Yeah, so I think... Uh, I stop here next time we continue with uh, the next unit start next unit so this unit ends here